Sean? Uh, we just got a report. Norris Springs Fire Department, 72 mile per hour wind gust in Norris Springs. Okay. Also, Ryan Knapp sent us a picture, which we don't have yet because we have to put it in the system, but yeah. it's of a funnel cloud looking thing just south of Norris Springs. So, Norris Springs, okay. and I know we're not there yet, but let's just take it. Yeah, Ryan is just south of Norris Springs. Okay. Sure. So, we, okay. Okay. So, we have Ryan here. Okay. All right, Ryan, go ahead uh, with what you're seeing right now. He is uh, just uh, south and east of Norris Springs. Ryan, I'll give it over to you. You can hear us? Ryan, can you hear us? Yeah, I got you. Okay, what are you seeing right now? Yeah, I got you. What are you seeing? We have the wall cloud, it looks like, right here. We are turning the camera right towards it. We are just south of the rotation. Uh, we can see the wall cloud right in front of us. Can you guys see it in the lightning here? Uh, we can see something there. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to see. It's gotten dark out, but when we get those flashes of lightning, we definitely can see uh, some something, some scud clouds, uh, kind of some lowering, at least from the overall uh, the cloud base, the thunderstorms. Once we get another flash of lightning, let's go ahead and take his uh, his feed full there if we can, uh, just so you can kind of see a better picture of what is going on. Uh, looking off well there in the distance, once we get another power flash, wow. uh, we should be able to see something that, there. It, there's a lot of clouds dropping down. Keep that, yeah. keep that picture. Wow. I, I, I mean, it could be trees. I don't... Okay. Oh, there's trees, yep. Yeah. But there's something behind the trees. Once he gets a little bit further down yeah. the road, we'll be able to see it. You can kind of see the, the clouds, uh, some scud clouds, as we call them. Uh, something there uh, we saw just a moment ago. Uh, once we get another power flash, yeah, there, there's definitely something there. Not exactly sure what it is, if, we, if there's rotation with it or not. But there is at least some lowering of the clouds, um, and that's definitely an ominous sign. Yeah, and we're seeing rotation there. We have that report of a 72-mile-per-hour wind gust. Uh, closer to Norris Springs, just south of Norris Springs, <clears throat> and also uh, multiple, bring it back to the radar, multiple looks, uh, uh, couplets of rotation currently. Yes. So there's this one kind of closer towards Norris Springs. And this is the area Ryan is at, um, yeah, looking to the east, so there could be some lowering that we saw on the video there right around Norris Springs. And, if it, and this, is, this is terrible, um, but if he did see that wall cloud, that funnel or whatever he, he's seen, it's kind of difficult to tell. South of North Springs, that puts it on track to moving towards Rudd. Yes. Um, if you live is, in Rudd, Floyd County, you need to be in your safe place now. And here's the other thing. The sirens, and I cannot confirm this, So, but I did see earlier from some viewers that um, the, the sirens are still off or not working, still okay. uh, unavailable in Rudd, so you're not going to get that warning. Uh, if I'm wrong, it's a fantastic thing to be, but uh, unfortunately, I don't think you're going to get that alert. Um, but... Be inside. In, in Rudd, also a little bit further east of Rudd on 18, also a little bit further north. You get towards Glass Avenue. That's just north of Rudd. You want to be in your safe place if you live in a farm closer to there. Rock Creek, we're seeing a little bit, uh, a, little, a little knob of rotation right here closer yeah, to Rock Creek. kind of messy, honestly. I mean, we got so many different areas that we're looking yeah. at. And, Very uh, similar to what happened back on December 15th, just a lot of little, little kinks, little uh, mm -hmm. areas of rotation in the and line. On December 15th? All of, like, all of, it was pretty much every other kink that we saw produced a tornado. Yeah. Not saying that's what's going to happen now, but we know that there have been tornadoes, and what we're seeing on the radar, there very well could be. Yeah. Uh, St. Ansgar, you're, so there's a lot going St. Ansgar, you're 10 minutes away or less from this area of rotation moving in closer to you. I'm going to take off these kind of little knobs that I, these little circulations that I had on, and we're going to continue to track things out. Uh, right now, that tornado warning still out for northwestern Floyd County, northeastern Cerro Gordo County. It is starting to move out of northeastern Cerro Gordo County, but Mason City still in that severe thunderstorm warning, still in that tornado warning. You cannot give you the all clear yet. Uh, we're also looking at St. Ansgar, another area of rotation right there. It's starting to look a little bit messy. Just real quick, looking at southern Minnesota, not seeing too much, although it does look like there's some strong winds uh, as it's moving a bit closer into parts of Winnebago County. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to take... Like we, okay, All right. so there is something there. Yeah. There's definitely so, something there. This is from Meta, a meteorologist Ryan Knapp just south of Norris Springs there in Iowa of something of, you know, of suspect with that area of rotation, possibly a wall cloud. doesn't really have the shape. It doesn't have that, uh, that funnel shape to it. It's not... Uh, it's more ragged, if you will. So that is a possible wall cloud there south of Norris Springs with that same thunderstorm that moved through Cerro Gordo County. Now moving into Floyd County. So Norris Springs... Rudd, 
areas north and west of Charles City, you need to be in your tornado safe place right now. So this is also a video. This is from uh, meteorologist Ryan Knapp. Uh, not sure if it's doesn't look like it's playing there. Yeah, um, I think it's a picture. Oh, it's just a picture? Yeah, okay. It's a picture. Uh, they, they said something about video. So if you have a video, uh, we can take that at some point. But at least you can see a picture there of that wall cloud uh, near in and around the Nora Springs area. Uh, so these are very dangerous storms. Sean mentioned it earlier. Wall cloud, basically the precursor before we get a funnel cloud and a possible tornado. So that is what we have going on in the North Springs area. We have all these little areas of rotation, just so many things happening right now with uh, these storms in North Iowa with the tornado warnings uh, there around Floyd County, now to the north and east of Mason City, but affecting St. Ansgar and Osage. Sean, if we can go ahead and zoom in uh, to this area of rotation. Uh, to, the, uh, to the north and west of Osage right now, this uh, area where we see some of the, the blue and red showing up there, yeah, right here. Uh, just east of Grafton. So this is getting very close to St. Ansgar right now. If you live in St. Ansgar, again, you need to be in your safe place right now. Basement, lowest level of your home, first floor. If you don't have a basement, of course, the first floor. Put as many walls between you and the outside. That's going to give you the most protection if, in fact there is a tornado on the ground. We hope there is not. This would be great if this is just up in the air and nothing touches down and doesn't do anything. That is what we want. We do not want to see a tornado on the ground, but because of what we are seeing on radar, the signature right here where this uh, green and the blue meets the red, that is an indication that there is some rotation right on the county line here, just west of St. Ansgar, that is going to be moving in uh, very shortly. In addition to other areas uh, down to the south, uh, south of uh, St. Ansgar, south and west of Osage, with uh, several more thunderstorms. And it looks like, Sean, uh, you go ahead and zoom it out. Uh, can we switch it over to the uh, the reflectivity just to look at how many, just how expansive uh, this storm threat is? And uh, we talked about this. Uh, you know, if you're just joining us now, there's been a lot going on. It is now uh, just after uh, 917, getting some reports here of uh, some hail again falling in the Clear Lake area. Also getting another report, uh, we got uh, power outages. Uh, 671 Alliant Energy customers are currently without power around Clear Lake. So if you, hopefully, uh, if, you don't ha I mean, if you don't have power right now in the Clear Lake area or if you're watching us right now and you might lose power, uh, you can always visit our website, KIMT.com, for the latest on power outages. But we'll also be tracking any more uh, power outages that are going to be uh, you know, happening across the area. This is, a, this is a look at our website right now. On KIMT.com, this is where you can look at some of the power outages um, across uh, North Iowa and Southeast Minnesota. As these storms are very, very electrically charged. There's a lot of lightning with them. They're you know, going to be capable of producing uh, potential power outages in addition to the wind threat that could also cause some power outages. As the secondary line moves across the state of Iowa, this is the first round. This is the initial round that we were talking about earlier today. Meteorologist Sean McAday, he was here this morning on daybreak at 4.30 this morning talking about the potential for supercell thunderstorms happening, and that's what we got, this cluster of storms. These were the, the storms out ahead of this main line that is producing the tornado threat. This is the tornado threat. Behind it, there is still a tornado threat, not as high, but this is going to be more of a damaging wind threat that's going to be moving across the state of Iowa and far southern Minnesota. Sean. I do want to make the point, though, that we already have a tornado. This is not for our area, but it's a reminder. Uh, closer to Carroll, closer to Coon Rapids, this is in that secondary round of storms, which comes through all of us later tonight. The cold front, there could be tornadoes embedded in there. Right now, we have a tornado warning out further to our south. Yeah, and kind west of getting a little kink in the line. Yeah, there, a little so. kink in the line, and we yep. could see that in our area later on tonight. Uh, but right now, still, we're watching severe thunderstorm warnings still eastern. Now, eastern, uh, it looks like <clears throat> Hancock County and also most of Saragorda, actually, pretty much all of Saragorda County in that severe thunderstorm yeah. warning. Uh, the, kind of the hot spot, Saragorda County, we've had tornado warnings. Yeah. We've had severe thunderstorm warnings, hail uh, possible uh, tornado, at least a funnel cloud reported near Mason City earlier, and now that, that first storm moving to the east around Osage, but still another one uh, coming on in. And uh, let's uh, go ahead, and we've been talking about Iowa a lot. I know there's a lot going on across uh, North Iowa. Sean, if you can go ahead and uh, switch it over back to uh, the radar, and let's look at uh, stuff going on in southern Minnesota, because there's also been several severe thunderstorm warnings uh, in southern Minnesota, at least around the Blue Earth area. Uh, we are getting some, uh, at least, uh, potential heavy rainfall moving into Albert Lee here along I-35 at some of the truck stops there on I-35, I-90, right at their interchange there. 
um, and also some heavy rainfall moving into Austin. Northwood, uh, Diamond Joe Casino getting at least uh, some, uh, you know, some moderate rain there in uh, northern Worth County. Uh, but back to the west, this is a, you know, still an impressive thunderstorm, at least cluster of thunderstorms on the northern edge of that line that we just saw in Iowa. This is moving through uh, Blue Earth County. Uh, it's going to be eventually moving into um, uh, Freeborn County affecting Albert Lee with uh, potential for some hail, at least uh, maybe penny to nickel size, where we have some of these cores showing up there, that, that purple, just south and east, east of Blue Earth, uh, not Blue Earth City, but Blue Earth, uh, there and around uh, Blue Earth County, uh, south of uh, Mapleton, southwest of New Richland, and moving into uh, Freeborn County. So there's a lot happening with that second line of thunderstorms moving into Minnesota. So it's not just an Iowa event. Everyone is going to be at risk for still more severe weather through the course of the next uh, couple of hours. It is 920 right now, so we still have a long ways to go. We've been going on with this for, you know, since about uh, 630 uh, this evening with these uh, tornado warnings and now even severe thunderstorm warnings that are currently moving through southern Minnesota and into northeast Iowa. So, Sean, if you can go ahead and switch it back to uh, the uh, velocity. Let's go ahead and look back at that tornado warning uh, that is currently in effect. We have, I believe we just have the one tornado warning, Yeah, the, well, the same first storm that moved through. And what the National it's Weather Service messy. was mentioning here um, is that kind of that main area of rotation that we were tracking through Saragoto County, through Hancock County for the past two hours, three hours, that kind of fell apart. Yep. What we're seeing now is it's a little bit more turbulent, um, but there's still a good potential for a lot of these smaller brief spin-ups to be towards the ground, and that's why we have that again Tornado warning now for the western part of Mitchell County and also northwestern part of Floyd County. Floyd County, this is honestly where the rotation looks the strongest uh, on the radar right here. So this is closer to Norris Springs and closer to Rudd. Uh, and something interesting about Rudd that I'm, I'm looking at our Facebook live stream right now. And someone said, and again, can't confirm this, but Rudd is having fire trucks go around the town because their siren, you know, was destroyed with yeah. the last tornado several months ago on December 15th. As we uh, all know, and that was a pretty big story when that happened. Yeah, um, I mean, and that's the best way, I mean, at least to be alert that something is happening in the Rudd area. The tornado siren is down, so the fire trucks are, you know, you know, great job by the fire department in Rudd for doing that and keep, keep keeping people safe in Rudd right now as there is a tornado warning currently in effect because we saw just a little bit ago, we had a, a photo and we even saw video from meteorologist Ryan Knapp, who's out in Storm Tracker uh, pretty much all evening with uh, at least a wall cloud visible in northwestern Floyd County, around North Springs, getting close to Rudd, but also we're looking at areas of rotation uh, just uh, west of Osage here, south and west of St. Ansgar. So if you live in any of these areas, Osage, St. Ansgar, uh, Rudd, North Springs, northwest of Charles City, uh, this is a tornado warning. You still need to be in your safe place right now until we give you the all clear, and hopefully that is going to be soon uh, because this is the only tornado warning uh, that we have an effect, Sean. I believe this is the only tornado warning. We still have severe thunderstorm warnings across uh, much of the area, yep. which are still very dangerous, and we're still watching that secondary line moving through. Uh, so this is this uh, other severe thunderstorm warning behind that first one that has the tornado warning. This is the now the second one that is moving into Mason City, Clear Lake. We had the report of some power outages, um, over 600 customers, uh, at least Alliant Energy customers, without power around Clear Lake because of multiple storms moving through. And as we look at, again, this is uh, at least uh, some of the power outages. Uh, this is uh, on our website, KIMT.com, uh, where you can go to to see uh, if there are any current power outages across North Iowa and Southern Minnesota. So let's go ahead and bring it back to the radar. Uh, we're going to kind of go back and forth with a lot of different things because, as we mentioned, there's a lot of stuff happening that we're trying to keep tabs on and give you information about what's going on. We've had reports of hail Around Clear Lake, we had some uh, penny to nickel size hail in Mason City. We had uh, quarter size hail, golf ball size hail uh, further to the west uh, near the Garner area with that first storm that moved through. And this one is still looking, you know, rather impressive there around St. Ansgar, getting some heavy rainfall, uh, maybe some hail as well around St. Ansgar at the present time, north and west of Charles City. Uh, but St. Ansgar and Osage, you are still under that tornado warning. Uh, going through the next, uh, you know, 20 to 30 minutes uh, with this very dangerous storm. And like I mentioned, uh, w mentioning behind that, this other storm that has the severe thunderstorm warning in Saragorda County, uh, including Mason City, Clear Lake, uh, Thornton, and Rockwell, 
with the potential for some gusty winds up to 60 miles per hour and also some quarter size hail. So, you know, one, two, three, four, five, we got several thunderstorms mm -hmm. that are going to be capable of producing severe weather. But right now the focus is at least that tornado warning that hopefully, hopefully at least based on what we are seeing on the velocity is that this could be, uh, you know, things could kind of be wrapping up at least in terms of rotation and possible tornado threat. Did we get another update? Uh, no, it's just a line. Uh, we have a, a line energy, uh, a view of a line energy right now. With I think that's just power outages. Um, okay. So when they can give that to us, they can put that up. Uh, yeah, yeah. A look at power outages right now across parts of North Iowa. We are getting reports: Mason City, Clear Lake, and it also looks like a little bit uh, closer to Manly, Kensett, uh, and maybe a little bit closer to Grafton as well. Of some power outages. Okay. We'll keep an eye on this. This is expected. These are very strong storms that are continuing to move through. Um, right now, what I'm starting to do is as these storms are still, they're still tornadic, but they're starting to turn at maybe at least a little bit weaker at the moment. I'm looking at some of the messages we're getting. And, and I mean, a lot. Okay. If you want to look at the messages, hopefully that's the case. If we want to go back to radar, just uh, was what Sean was mentioning is that these storms might be uh, kind of uh, more evolving from that tornado threat. And you know, hopefully that's the case. And we're just more looking at um, a heavy rain, a heavy rain threat, but there is still at least the threat for uh, hail and damaging wind gusts. But if we can get rid of the tornado threat, that's at least one thing that is good news. But no, even if there's not a tornado warning in effect, if you have a severe thunderstorm warning in your area, like Saragorda County and also areas to the west of Alberly, Blue Earth, um, even Buffalo Center, these are still dangerous thunderstorms that can produce very large hail up to quarter or golf ball size, but winds in excess of 60 or even 70 miles per hour. Those are, you know, those are dangerous winds. Those are almost tornadic uh, type winds. When we talk about winds over 70 miles per hour, we had that happen in Nora Springs with a report of a 72 mile per hour gust from the uh, fire department there. So that happened with the, these storms out ahead of the line, but that can also still happen with the storms around Buffalo Center right now. Stretching up to the north and east around Albert Lee and all the way back down across uh, parts of central and western Iowa. This is going to be, you know, still going on for several hours that we have. Or we're going to be tracking these storms. Once we get past the tornado threat, uh, we're going to kind of reassess everything and eventually we'll send it back over to regular programming. But now that we're coming up on about 930, we're going to be eventually going into our 10 o'clock newscast. Um, and hopefully, you know, after that, things are going to start to wrap up a bit and, uh, you know, sort of wind down for the overnight hours. But as we are continuing, continuing to track this tornado warning, let's go ahead and uh, bring, look at the tornado warning one more time. So, again, a uh, tornado warning in effect for at least northern parts of Floyd County, northwestern Floyd County for Rudd uh, near North Springs and southwestern uh, Mitchell County. This is in fact uh, including the areas around uh, Carpenter, Mitchell, um, St. Ansgar as well. This is until 945. So we are got about another, uh, you know, 15, 17 minutes on this tornado warning that does still at least have the structure of potentially at least uh, having some rotation with it. If it doesn't have rotation, it's still dropping a lot of heavy rainfall, possibly some hail up to near a quarter size. Sean, if you can switch it over to the velocity mode, I just want to kind of look yeah. around the Osage area, just looking at the structure there. Mm. Um, there could be at least something, you know, something a suspect. Yeah, right in here. Uh, it's very, uh, you know, it's kind of ragged, but we are also really far away from the radar side. But around Osage and St. Ansgar, this is where we would have a potential tornado if there is one on the ground. So if you live in St. Ansgar, Osage, parts of Mitchell County, you need to be in your tornado safe place now until the tornado warning expires. And we give you the all clear that it is safe to come out and, you know, you know, re you know go about your lives and everything because this is a dangerous situation if there is, in fact, a tornado on the ground. We have not gotten a confirmation from that. This is all radar indicated, but the thing to keep in mind is that we're not going to be able to see a tornado. You know, any, no one's going to be able to see a tornado. It is either wrapped in rain, but it is also dark out. It is after sunset. You can't see anything unless it is illuminated by lightning, but that's not necessarily, necessarily going to be the case. So if you live in St. Ansgar, if you live in Osage, uh, parts of Mitchell County, you need to be in your tornado safe place right now. A basement, the lowest level of your home, put as many walls between you and the outside that's going to keep you the safest during this uh, tornado warning as we are tracking it across northeastern uh, or at least uh, parts of Mitchell County in north, e north central and northeast Iowa. Eventually, the storm would be moving towards the uh, Riceville area um, and eventually uh, maybe even Lime Springs as well. If it holds together, if it, uh, you know, if it keeps the rotation, even if it doesn't keep the rotation, you are still going to see a strong storm moving in uh, to areas south of Spring Valley. 
excuse me, uh, affecting areas around Osage. Starting to lose my voice a little bit. I might need some water here well, soon. Well, well, <laughs> Uh, we got uh, we got to uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and switch spots. I'm right, losing yeah, my yeah. voice. Let's uh, I, I had switch some water it over. Recently. All right, um, perfect. So, <laughs> so what we're seeing right now is out of the southwest, and just to reiterate what he said, tornado warning still the western part of uh, Mitchell County. This is moving. We don't know exactly where that air tornado could be if there is one there, but we know there's some messy rotation going on currently right there across the region. That's going to continue to move in from the southwest towards the northeast. And I know we're getting a lot of messages. I'm trying to go through all your messages. Thank you for sending uh, pictures and reports. We could eventually pass those along to the National Weather Service. But right now, we need to focus on the danger which is still present, which is right now moving through parts of Mitchell County. Then that's going to move into parts of Howard County, Riceville, Stacyville, Leroy even now crossing the Minnesota border towards Bristol and Harmony maybe, a little bit closer towards 10 p.m., or even after 10 p.m. <laughs> it's going to be a long night, and then we have even more storms behind this. So this is going to be, you know, we have the 10 o'clock newscast coming up in half an hour. We might just blow right through that, um, maybe, if there's a tornado warning. If not, if, if the tornado warning expires and it's a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings, we'll, we'll assess then. But right now, still a lot going on, and we need to keep you safe, and hopefully we can get a, a plethora of, uh, really, reports in for tomorrow morning because we're getting a lot in right now of, of damage, of power yeah. outages, of hail. Yeah, let's take a look at this storm reports. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, that, yeah, there was reports of some of those funnels down here. Um, and then it became dark and it becomes a little bit harder, to, more difficult to see some of that. We did get a, a viewer, and I was going through some of our messages earlier, uh, and it's difficult to get things on to our system quickly, but there was one viewer who sent me a video from near Garner. That looked like a funnel cloud. Uh, and we've heard reports of kind of funnel clouds elsewhere. One near Mason City. We'll continue to keep an eye on that. It does look like we have reports of wind damage. Uh, so this is noted power line snaps and transmitter lights up. Okay. This was, uh, yeah, so this is near 18. So that was just one wind report. You got some more? Yep. Let's uh, go ahead and put some of these up here. Kind of have to go through them one by one. Let's yeah. go to the other wind damage there. Small outstructure and large tree knocked over from inflow of storm at this location. Okay. That checks out. That makes sense. Got some hail reports, uh, quarter size. Quarter size, quarter size, yeah. There was a lot around that Highway 18 corridor, Mason City, Clear Lake, that kind of area. Yeah, so a lot of, a lot of reports, at least. I mean, uh, hail, wind damage, uh, some of the tornadoes, uh, funnel clouds back to the south and west. Um, yep. And then the earlier hail that we saw up in uh, southeastern Minnesota is now the, the second round of storms is uh, starting to move in. Yeah, let's bring it back to the radar, whole region, southern Minnesota. We had a thunderstorm move through Rochester earlier. It uh, looks like we're going to start to get some more now into the region because here's that cold front. This morning when I came in, I said 10 p.m. You're going to start to see some stuff move in along the I-35 corridor, probably like Steele County, Albert Lee first. That's happening pretty much now. You're starting to see that line moving in closer to Albert Lee. This is that cold front moving in with what will be kind of the final round of storms. You could see something stray tomorrow, but it wouldn't be severe. Uh, but still, we have these really kind of strong supercell thunderstorms in, in our area, in North Iowa, Soon to move into southern Minnesota, and the one in the one in Mitchell County has that that ominous look. Yeah, it look. still looks pretty impressive, and I, I believe that yeah, they still have the uh, tornado warning. It looks like they did, ex or at least uh, issued a, a severe thunderstorm warning um, out ahead of that. So, um, you know, we're we're going to still continue with this. Let me go ahead and see if I can switch it off so we can get rid of that uh, mm -hmm. tornado warning and just talk about the severe thunderstorm warning that's uh, currently in effect there. Um, possible, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I still believe it. I think there is still some rotation with that storm. It's just not as, um, it's not as impressive, I guess. Yeah, it's not, it's not as put together. Thankfully, the rotation, which was held together for like three hours, weakened a little bit. Um, but just based on the radar right here, you can see here's the inflow region right into here where there's a little bit of some clearing in the radar signature. It's where those deep reds turn to those deep greens. This is where air is moving into the storm and up, it's getting sucked in. It would be somewhere around here. It might have just moved through Osage, uh, where there could it's probably some rotation there. And that's where maybe you're talking about a, a tornado or maybe two, because it still looks kind of messy. There's one rotation signature closer to St. Ansgar. There's another one kind of vaguely here closer to Osage. So we'll continue to keep an eye on this. Um, they did extend the severe thunderstorm warning out from that initial tornado warning, but they haven't issued a tornado warning out ahead of this yet. If this were to strengthen, they would, but for the time being, they have not. Although I do want to say that this severe thunderstorm warning they've issued, I would still take very seriously, and I would still be in your safe spot uh, because there's a tornado possible tag on this. This happens when 
it's a, it is a chance that you could see some quick spin up, which was just a severe thunderstorm turning into, again, a tornado. So right now, tornado warning still for St. Ansgar and still for Osage, maybe technically not downtown Osage, but just to the west of downtown Osage, so pretty pretty darn close. Another 10 minutes on that, so they might just expire it, but we'll have to yep. see if that storm cycles again and we see another uh, increase in the velocity, increase in that rotation, we might see a new tornado warning mm-hmm. get issued. But at least we have that severe thunderstorm warning uh, in effect right now before we you know see something else happen. Yeah, another point I want to make, if we could go to the southwest, maybe give some people the all clear. I'm not sure who we're going to be able to give it to. Uh, Hancock County, you have a brief second, although you look further west of Hancock County. Uh, here's some more storms rolling on through. A lot of those are severe warned again. It looks like there's a severe thunderstorm warning just north of Algona, towards like Buffalo Center. There's been a lot of severe thunderstorm warnings here near Scarville, Lake Mills, Buffalo Center, in the northern part of Winnebago County. Uh, this is the Albert Lee Live Eye in the Sky. Right now, we're waiting. Are we seeing some lightning? Uh, this was just pulled in a little bit of lightning. Seeing a little bit of lightning right there. Albert Lee. Yeah, look at this. So here's Albert Lee. Here's some stronger thunderstorms moving in from the west. This is that second round of thunderstorms, which will move in. And then after that moves on through, you have the real all clear and things will get better. But for the time being, we're still doing this. We're approaching hour four of going on for you know, the, just straight with the severe thunderstorms and this tornado threat. Northern part of uh, Winnebago County, still severe thunderstorm warning. We're tracking large hail. We're tracking strong winds. Looks like there's some strong thunderstorms elsewhere in parts of southern Minnesota. Not seeing a severe thunderstorm. Well, it actually looks like there is a severe thunderstorm warning here towards uh, Keister, towards Wells. Wells, there was uh, tornadoes earlier, this, or actually last year, December 15th. It was closer to there, just east of uh, Blue Earth, t- closer to Bush Creek. And uh, I don't think that extends into parts of Freeborn County, but it might. No. There's some strong storms moving on in. And, you know, you, there could be rotation embedded in some of these. So that's something we'll have to track. Bring it further south. I wanted to give some people the all clear. Um, Hancock County has a brief, a brief period right now where you're in the all clear, but it's not going to last for too long. And you need to have your wits about you. Don't stray too far from home because there's the second line that will be probably in towards parts of Hancock County. I mean, western Han- Hancock County, it'll be there uh, within 10 minutes. So you should start to get back inside. These are some strong storms moving in with more hail, more winds. And we can't discount a brief tornado spin up with these as well. The atmosphere is still spinning like a top right now. Uh, If you're closer to Garner, you have a brief second to breathe. If you're closer to Clear Lake, I think Clear Lake is still in that severe thunderstorm warning, if I'm correct. Yep, it should be uh, just moving out, though. So I would see, I mean, Clear Lake, uh, you know, you're right on the line, right on the line, getting some rain still, but it is moving away from you right now. Yeah, uh, Ventura, all clear. Things are looking, it's still going to be windy outside, so don't stray too far. And again, there's more storms coming in, but you got a a brief second to breathe. Right now, Clear Lake, you probably have another 10 minutes, and then you got the all clear. Let's zoom out. Again, take a look at maybe the velocity. See what else we got going on in some spots. Um, it looks a little, a little bit messy. messy. Still pretty windy in parts of Cerro Gordo County, but it's not as put, not as put together as it was. So that's that's good news. I mean, let's check that other area that we were keeping an eye on. It's closer to still more County. raggedy. So that I mean that's good news. That's what we want to see. That means that the velocity it's not as impressive. There's still something there. Yeah. Um, but it's not as it's not as I don't know. It's, it's not a rotation enough that we would see a tornado signature at least, but there is still some rotation in and around that thunderstorm uh, in Mitchell County. Yeah, there's some. It's not. It's it's looking a lot better, so that's that's good news. Although I, it's not the all clear. You still have a severe thunderstorm warning in Mitchell County and into parts of Howard County, and if that were to continue, it would be in towards Fillmore County probably within an hour or a little bit over an hour, depending on where in parts of Fillmore County you are. But you can. At least take some solace in the fact that it is looking a little bit better on the velocity. I will say the radar doesn't look – there's a giant inflow region right here where air is getting sucked into this storm, all this moist, warm air. It's rising quickly. It's probably elevating some hail. And it's also uh, – this is where there's going to be some rotation that the storm is probably trying to get. But because of all this stuff a little bit further southwest of that storm, it's kind of interfering with some turbulence. So it can't get maybe as organized as it would like to. But there is still a, a hint there that it wants to it wants to still put some stuff out. So we're going to continue to keep an eye on that. Uh, yeah, we've had some hail, it looks like, towards parts of Mitchell County. We've had so many hail reports. I've seen golf ball-sized hail. I haven't seen any baseball-sized hail yet, which is good news because there is a, a real chance for that if some of these storms were maybe a bit stronger. 
Um, so yeah, we're still seeing that in Mitchell County, still seeing strong winds, still a lot of severe thunderstorm warnings. We're approaching 940. We're 20 minutes from our 10 o'clock newscast, which we will be tracking this again for. Tornado watch still in effect, and I think it's through midnight. Um, Correct, yep. Yeah, still midnight. midnight through places like Olmsted County, places like Mower County, Fillmore County, Dodge County. Have a way to receive weather alerts tonight through about midnight because things are still occurring. Also, Howard County uh, places, Howard County, Mitchell County, Floyd County, also kind of in that region where things could last through about midnight. Things are going to end a little bit sooner than that elsewhere. And, and we, it looks like we got a new severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, looks like that one is a little bit further south of our area. This yeah. one is moving through the Ford Dodge area. But this is along that uh, that last line, that la final round of severe weather uh, that's going to be moving through North Iowa as well with the storms uh, back to the west. It looks like that tornado warning did expire. So we have 20 minutes. Um, oh, no, it's still there. Okay, never mind. Yep, until uh, 945. 945. So they're gonna, I Five assume minutes. they're going to expire it. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's at least uh, not an indication that we see here on radar. There's still very slight rotation with the storm, um, but there isn't the same signature we saw earlier. So they may, at least uh, from what we're seeing now, may allow it to expire and not reissue a new tornado warning, this which is, would be great news. That, that would be good news. I still think, and I need people to understand, that if you're in a severe thunderstorm warning, still stay inside. There is a risk yes. for very large hail. Um, a lot of these severe thunderstorm warnings have what's called a tornado possible tag, which is a tornado could spin out of this easily. This is one of those that's moving through Mitchell County, now into parts of Howard County. See how it says threat, tornado possible? That's a tornado possible tag. Also considerable means that it's, not, it's even stronger than your normal severe thunderstorm. You're seeing stronger winds. You're seeing larger hail. That's another risk that we're tracking right now. Uh, this still kind of looks like an ugly, it, it does look like an ugly storm still mo moving through Mitchell County. It's about to move into Riceville with this inflow region. So you're probably going to see some strong winds moving right here. Another severe thunderstorm warning just popped up. So if we could uh, take a look at that, Aaron, uh, of that severe thunderstorm warning, see where this is. Uh, this That's one, the same line back to the west. Same line, yeah. So remember how I said uh, Kanawa, Kanawa, right? Remember how I said Kanawa, you had a brief little window Maybe you want to get back inside right now because these severe thunderstorms are starting to expand again from the west. Although they do look briefly weaker, kind of closer to Algona, but you get towards Bancroft, you get towards Winnebago County, and they're still pretty put together. Garner, you had a brief moment to breathe. Now start thinking about getting back inside. Uh, and Garner, you probably have maybe another hour or a little bit. Yeah, probably about another hour, I would say, until we can give you the good, the final all clear. But for the time being, not yet. Yeah, and it looks like this uh, line of thunderstorms, it does extend back up to the north and east into southern Minnesota. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're looking at now, this is the uh, Free Warning County area, Albert Lee, uh, also in that severe thunderstorm warning. So what the National Weather Service is doing is they're basically putting a warning along the entire line because the whole line represents the risk of severe weather, including damaging wind gusts over 60 miles per hour, potentially some large hail up to um, quarter size. But also, there is the real possibility that there could still be some embedded rotation within the line of thunderstorms that could represent a tornado threat after those other storms that we had with the tornado warnings uh, passed to the east. So as we're looking at uh, this area of um, you know the radar here in Freeborn County, uh, let's if we can, can we take a live look at Albert Lee right now? I believe the live eye that we have in Albert Lee is looking to the south and west. So what we are seeing there, uh, some at least some flashes of lightning. Uh, some rain falling in uh, downtown right now, uh, looking back towards the south and west, looking directly into the line of thunderstorms. Um, not looking as impressive as we saw earlier with the Mason City live eye, at least from a you know flashing uh, lightning and everything. It's not really as bright as the Mason City live eye with that very powerful uh, electrically charged thunderstorm. There's some flashes, but um, that's all we're getting in uh, Albert Lee right now. But eventually there's going to be some very heavy rainfall uh, moving into uh, downtown Albert Lee here probably in about the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah. So this, uh, let's bring it to the tornado warning. In uh, So the tornado this, warning would expire in 30 seconds. 945, yeah. yeah. So this could expire in around 30 seconds. And this would be our last tornado warning. We still have severe thunderstorm warnings in effect, but this would be the final tornado warning uh, if they allow it to expire, which they likely will. Yeah, they probably will. I'll bring it to velocity. We'll just get a better sense of if they will. Uh, there's, you know, there's some rotation there, um, but it's not super impressive. So we got maybe 15 more seconds, 10 more seconds. 
Um, severe thunderstorm warning still for places like Riceville, Osage, and a little bit further into uh, parts of northwestern Howard County. All of Mitchell County, you need to be in your safe place inside right now. This is a considerable severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, considerable severe thunderstorm warning means it's stronger than the normal one. That tornado warning did expire. So things are looking a little bit clearer. Yep, and we still moment. have several tornado warnings, uh, or several severe thunderstorm warnings. Excuse me, the last tornado warning just expired here at 945 for parts of Mitchell County. We're still uh, watching an area of, you know, at least some weak rotation. That is why the uh, tornado tag, the tornado possible tag is still on for the severe thunderstorm warning uh, that is in effect from Osage through Riceville. Eventually, that storm is also going to be moving towards Lime Springs, um, areas south of Harmony, southern Minnesota, likely eventually going to be in the path with uh, potential for quarter-sized hail and even some damaging wind gusts up to near uh, 60, uh, possibly as high as 70 miles per hour, because we did have reports with the same storm that as it moved through the Norris Springs area that it did re uh, produce a wind gust up to 72 miles per hour. So now that the tornado threat hopefully is over for now, we're moving into still a damaging wind threat and still a hail threat and still a very heavy rainfall threat across much of North Iowa and southeastern Minnesota. So we are going to, going to keep close tabs on all of these thunderstorms that are currently moving through. You'll notice the radar still very messy. What's happening is we had those big supercells that had the tornado warnings, produced tornadoes, tornadoes uh, south and west of Mason City, funnel cloud near Mason City. But now they're sort of merging into a whole line as that cold front really advances to the east. So what we are going to do is we are going to take a break. We have our 10 o'clock newscast coming up here in about 14 minutes. We are going to take a break now. We'll send it back over to programming, assess everything that's been going on. We have damage reports. We have hail reports. There are power, power outages. Excuse me. Been talking for a while, losing my voice a little bit. Power outages across uh, parts of North Iowa with these line, this line of thunderstorms going through. So like I said, we're going to reassess everything. We're going to track these storms. And we'll have updates coming up here on KIMT News 3 at 10 o'clock. But for now, going to send it back over to regular programming, and we'll have more updates as we go through the night.